YouTube, it's Clormo. Tonight I'm gonna bring you first video on integrating the iPad and GarageBand iPad into your Logic Pro X workflow. The first thing I'm gonna talk about, it's about Logic Remote. There's a few videos out there that talk about it, but I wanna go a little bit more in depth, even though it's a quick video. So the first thing I want to show you real quick is, is how to set it up. So to set up your your Logic Remote, the first thing is that you have to make sure that your computer Bluetooth is on. So right now it's on. I'm going to go to the settings real quick and go to Bluetooth. So you see, uh, so you have an idea what the devices are. We're going to be looking for the iPad. So we're going to make our iPad discoverable. Go into your settings. I'm already in the settings and in Bluetooth in my iPad screen. So I'm going to turn it on. I can see my my Mac Pro, right? Because it's discoverable. And I'm going to select my Mac Pro. So now we are connected to to our computer our ipad and computer are connected i'm going to go again into my system preferences make sure that you go to sharing and turn on remote management and bluetooth sharing and with with all of that in place now we're going to i'm going to turn my screen here into just Logic Pro X, I'm in my iPad, I'm gonna go and open Logic Remote, which is in the App Store, obviously. If you haven't downloaded it, uh, you can do so. So it's reconnecting. It's taking a little bit longer than expected to connect. So it's asking me wasn't able to connect this this will happen to you the, the first time that you make the pairing also it's gonna give you similar type of message to connect now we are connected so what is logic remote logic remote um, it's nothing more than be creates or co converts your iPad into uh, a user interface that would let you do pretty much everything that you can do with your mouse and your keyboard in Logic Pro X, only that you're going to be using your hands in the iPad to do it. A, a few disclaimers. It's not perfect. There are things that are a little bit laggy depending on what you're trying to do. That's why I don't use it very much. And also, it's this is non-configurable. What you see in the screen on the on, in the iPad, it's what you get, and it's all dependent on what you you have in your project and what tracks you have selected. If you if it's seen at the top, I have the pop piano, which is the only track that I have because to demonstrate this, that's all you we need to do. We just have one track. Now going from the top left to the right if you notice the first um, view that i got real quick here was the mixer and you can see my my faders my tracks so if i go to the top left i have my views and you, you can see that the blue highlighting mixer it's what we're seeing so depending on what track on what instrument you have it's the what you can access as far as views in the first two at the top right here we have smart controls and keyboard and chord strips so let me change my mixer to the very first one and there you go i can see my smart controls for that track for that instrument and i have uh my p my keyboard keys on the bottom and i can actually play them and I can access all the other options that typical instrument will let you use. And if you have used GarageBand in iPad before, this is what a, a, a smart instrument or a, on an instrument will look like. So there's some similarities that you can draw there. Now let's go again to another view. 
let's go to key commands. I'm gonna leave the core strips for last. Key commands, it's a pretty neat feature. You can see at the bottom the little dots that are, are white. This just lets you access all the key commands that you have configured in your in your Logic Pro X session. And you can add yours to any of these um, blank squares. You can you can actually add your own key commands, which is a, it could come in handy depending on how your setup is. Again, I don't use it that much. This smart help down here at the bottom lets you access all the Logic Pro X help manual and you can search on the top right and type whatever you want or you can go to the left into the different topics that are there now with that being said i'm gonna go to the chord strips which is the primary use i see for the logic remote or the one that i use the most and i think that you're gonna get most benefit from the view will change to a different chords based on the key that you or or the scale that you have set up so if we go to logic pro x window real quick and we expand here uh my chords are going to be dependent on the key that i'm playing my project at so if i double click but if i double click in the right spot and I change my key you you saw you you, you notice that the iPad change right so it's saying key signature if I change my key signature to whatever if I change it to a major I hit OK my chord strips changed based on my key so I'm gonna bring it back to C major. Now going back into the iPad, into your chord strips, this is the, the feature that you can get the most out of from Logic Remote because you can see that I am playing chords and if you pay attention to the Logic Pro X window here, See, I'm playing chords with the touch of a finger, which is exactly the same as the smart instruments in GarageBand. So this is very good for you to create your own chord progressions, right? And stuff like that, you know. And then your your strips at the bottom, the ones that are. Uh, darkened out they represent bass kind of notes right so you can do some something like that and you can if you hit the sustain it sustains the chord for you this is a good way of doing it last but not least in this window here that i brought up again on the views depend the, the the default is set to automatic so when depending again on the track and instrument that i have and what view i'm accessing it's the the way that i'm gonna see my my controls so for a keyboard obviously automatically it's gonna show me uh piano keys but i can also access a fretboard and And I can play my instrument with a fretboard. It's just, if you had a guitar instrument, this will be the automatic view. And I can also access a drum pad interface. So you can see that, again, depending on the track, this is what you're going to show. So you can get, you, you have an idea of what that's going to do depending on your instrument. So I'm just gonna bring it back to where I had it. The second button from the left, 
on, on the top is just accesses the library and you can just use your your hand to move it around and this is gonna give you access to the default instruments that are in logic you can also if i come here to the top and click in where the when i see my measurements and the name of the track i can access and move around in the different bars which is good and can come in handy as well i'm going to turn off the library you can also you have your play buttons obviously right i can play you can stop go back record from here same as a midi hardware instrument would do then going to my right you can turn on cycling and if I touch on the yellow strip, I can make my cycling measurement seven, eight, whatever, how many bars you want. You can turn it off. You can uh, turn on your metronome and then the adjustable settings let you just do what you see here. You can undo, redo, uh, do stuff with tracks it shows you what you're connected to you can check your velocity range and then you can edit your chords no matter you you saw how you do it with changing the key but in your signature but if you go to edit chords you see i have the first the one that's highlighted in blue it's selected and i can just change it manually and make it whatever i want and this is also a feature that mimics smart smart instruments from GarageBand in the iPad. Last but not least, this also mimics the GarageBand on iPad. Is that little question mark there? If you press it and turn it on, the program itself it's telling you what they do. Now I'm gonna go to the mixer just one last time. So what I want to try here, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to play something real quick and then show you that the mixer does indeed work to control your your panning, automation, volume, etc, etc. So I'm just going to play something something dumb here. So that's it, four bars of, <laughs> of nothing. <laughs> now I'm gonna go to my mixer, I'm gonna play that. Simple, right? I just turned the volume down. That's, that's all I did, nothing special. I'm gonna stop it. Now on the far right, if I if I select pan and volume, I can see my faders with pan and volume. If I go up with the different buttons, the sense, I can see the sense. I don't have any. I could see the audio effects that are being applied to that channel strip. My media effects, if I, if I want to add any, I would just press there, choose a plugging, and then this is exactly as you can do in Logic. So... That's why I said it's not, I don't use it that much as a as an control interface for Logic Pro, but you can see that you can do it. It's a little bit limited and thank God I didn't get any issues here or any errors, but I, I have used it and make it be, um, seen it become very laggy or unresponsive. So, you know, that's the... Just the limitations of it so again really course review it's what i think you got you can get the most out of from logic remote so experiment with that experiment with logic remote itself see if you can find something useful for the way you work i let's see i'm gonna go back to the fretboard real quick I just wanted to say that um, GarageBand, when I talk to about that in the next video, you're going to see that you have a distinction between the 
fretboard with your core strips, which is a, it's a hybrid, or if you have your fretboard with just the smart controls and the fretboard. And again, dependent on the track and instrument that you have. So that's all for this tutorial. And then in the next video, I'm going to walk you through GarageBand for iPad. I'm going to show you smart instruments and we're going to do something similar to what we did here with the uh, core strips. And I'm going to show you how you can work inside of GarageBand using smart instruments to create chord progressions and then export those out of there and put them in Logic Pro. So you can make the contrast of doing it in real time with the control interface of the iPad and Logic Remote and using it GarageBand and then exporting it in those cases where you're not in front of your computer working with Logic Pro X. So with that, see you in the next video. And the next video, it's going to be the one that it's going to launch the giveaway. So make sure that you pay close attention with that drop so you can participate for that giveaway, that $20 Amazon gift card. See you next time. Peace out, YouTube.